on YouTube land I am Chris Catalunya before we get into this custom DIY instructional go ahead and check out my Instagram Chris Catalunya with an underscore at the end go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel I would greatly appreciate it and hit that notification bell so when I upload a video you'll know all right let's get into it I finally did it y'all I did that custom with that Nike SB that diamond dunk in black and changed it to the OG colorway and it turned out hella good I caught these when they released at retail price at about $100 to $110 with the intent of changing them up to the OG style model. Now if you plan to do this custom, hopefully you already have this shoe in hand. If not, you can go to StockX or Grailed, you can find the black versions for about $150. The white pairs are going for about $200, which is kind of crazy right now. And actually Sneakerhead in the Bay, which I'll link above, he actually did a video of this same custom but with the white shoe. And in all honesty, I think it's easier to do it when the shoe is all black. Now, the reason why I'm doing this custom is because back in 2005, I wasn't able to cop the shoe. I was in high school and of course my mom wouldn't let me out of the house. She was a... Uh, they, they, my parents were pretty strict so it was really it was pretty much impossible for me to catch the original pair of these and looking at StockX I think the OG pair is going for a thousand possibly even more than a thousand dollars which is kind of crazy to me now before you take on this project the key is to remain patient because if you speed up with this process your shoe can look like a hot mess and to give you a heads up the completion of one shoe took about three and a half to four hours so let's talk about the supplies that you will need for this project first you will need the colored paints you have gift box blue and you have the flat white they both cost about seven dollars and they are of the four ounce bottle and they are supplied by the angeles company next you'll need that rubbing alcohol at 70 percent this is to correct the mistakes if you happen to make a mistake on the shoe and this costs about two to three dollars a bottle and this is of the 16 ounce then we have acetone or nail polish remover and this is of the 16 ounce variety this costs anywhere from five to seven dollars and this is to remove the coloring off of the upper material so we can paint on it after that we have that GAC 900 and this is of the eight ounce bottle on Amazon this costs about twelve dollars and the reason why we're using the GAC 900 is because we have a soft piece of fabric on the shoe outside of the leather panels and to match that softness we're gonna mix this GAC 900 with one of those color of paints the gift box blue or the flat white and apply it on the shoe now when we're applying acetone or rubbing alcohol to the shoe we're going to use one of these a cotton round or a cotton ball it really doesn't matter what you choose it's definitely your preference and these cost like what two dollars a bag at Walmart or something like that I don't have paint specific jars or containers so I'm just gonna use disposable shot glasses and these come in like a 50 pack for like two dollars on Amazon the paint brushes I'm using I bought from Amazon they are the Hardy Bay and they come in a 10 pack and it cost about four to six dollars i'm actually using only two brushes from this pack i'm using the filbert which is the smaller brush it's the filbert number two and i'm using the shader number six for this project last but not least i'm using a heat gun from harbor freight it's called a drill master and it costs anywhere from seven dollars to ten dollars and harbor freight always has a coupon online just go on google and type harbor freight coupon and it is like 20 percent off to 40 percent off that you can use in store in previous projects a lot of people have asked me if they can use a hair dryer and the answer is no you definitely need a heat gun for this type of project because you need to reach heat of above 300 degrees and your hair dryer just can't reach that so before we start painting the shoe make sure you have a printout or have some reference to an OG diamond dunk model so we're not painting the wrong panels as we go also have all your supplies on your desk work on a clean surface and let's get into it so the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to take off the silver nike swoosh and we're going to lift up the back tab and remove the swoosh and then after that we'll unlace the shoe and we're not going to use these laces again on the shoe especially since the og model didn't call for this particular color they actually call for the black laces that are included with the shoe so take these and store them away 
Go ahead and reference your OG dunk diagram. The first panel we're gonna take off is gonna be on the lateral side of the shoe. We're gonna take our acetone, pour it on some cotton balls or cotton rounds, and we're gonna start rubbing off that side panel. So the objective is not to actually take off the coloring on this panel. We're actually just trying to take off the clear coat. So when we apply that white base coat, it'll stick onto the leather. And following your diagram, we're just gonna get the neck or the collar. We're gonna get the back. We're gonna get the medial side of the shoe and we're gonna get the toe box area as well. Now it's important for you to hit all these areas up with proper care because if you don't hit it up with proper care, it can lead to cracking when we start painting the shoe or when you start wearing the shoe. After hitting all those areas up with the acetone, go ahead and take your heat gun and hit up those side panels and dry up those areas. Now you don't want to focus on an area too long. We don't want to burn up the fabrics. Honestly, five seconds is all you will really need on each panel. Next up, we're gonna use that flat white. Now this flat white is gonna act as the base coat for the shoe. Because we're using a black shoe and it is dark, in order for that gift box blue to show up, we have to have a lighter color under that. So we're gonna use that white base coat and apply it to all the different panels. So go ahead and take your shot glass and we're gonna pour the paint into it. When applying the base coat, try to have it pretty thin. We don't need it super thick or else the drips will show when we apply the final coats. If you have a lot of paint on your paintbrush, try to spread that to different areas of the panels or try to pick that stuff back up and put it back into the bottle or a piece of paper. Once you're done with that base coat, go ahead and grab your heat gun, put it on the lowest settings and hit it on the panel. And again, don't stay in one particular area for too long. It could damage the shoe. All right, off to the next panel, the toe box. I usually like to work on the biggest panels first, then work on the smaller ones. So go ahead and start your base coat on this toe box area. After the toe box, we're gonna focus on the heel and the areas that are gonna be painted are the ones that don't have that crocodile leather. And of course, hit it with that heat gun, of course, on that lowest setting. Next step is to paint with that gift box blue. So we're gonna shake it up a little bit, get rid of those air bubbles, and then we'll pour it into our shot glass. Now, when we start painting with this gift box blue, definitely don't hit it with a heavy stroke or heavy ink. We definitely want to do at least three light coats of this gift box blue so it spreads evenly. So this is the first coat of gift box blue. We're going to hit it with that heat gun. After we hit it with that heat gun, we're going to wait about 10 minutes before we start the next coat. What you can actually do is start working on a different panel. By then it would be 10 minutes and then you can start your other coat. So I've done about three coats on the shoe, on the lateral, the medial, the toe box, and the back. So right now I'm just doing the final touches, getting the edges done up. And then after that, I'm just gonna hit it with the heat gun and we'll move on to something else. Next item up is gonna be the tongue of the shoe. It is done up in a different type of fabric, a softer type of fabric than the leather that is used on most of this shoe. And we're gonna use that GAC 900 and we're gonna use that flat white paint and we're gonna use a one to one ratio. You can measure this out with a scale or eyeball it. Once you pour them together, go ahead and mix it up and then we're just gonna blot it on the tongue of the shoe. This part of the project is what's gonna consume most of our time because we're blotting that white paint on a black tongue. It's gonna take a long time for that black tongue to turn white. After blotting a couple areas of the tongue, go ahead and hit it with the heat gun and definitely make sure that your heat gun is not close to this tongue because I believe that this is actually made out of a nylon material. After applying that white base coat, we're now gonna apply that gift box blue, but we're gonna do that same one to one ratio, that gift box blue with that GAC 900. After pouring it up, go ahead and mix it with that paintbrush and start applying to the tongue of the shoe. Keep blotting that gift box blue onto the tongue and make sure to use that heat gun and apply it to the tongue. After several sessions of blotting that gift box blue onto the tongue, it'll start to show up and it'll start to look more like a solid color. 
After you're finished painting, definitely hit this up again with that heat gun and make sure that all the areas are dried up. Then you're going to set this outside or in a dry area and let this cure for 24 to 48 hours. When that curing process is done, what you're going to do is take a waterproofer and spray it onto this shoe. You can use an Angelus waterproofer, a finish line waterproofer. I'm actually going to use a nice kicks crep protect and spray it onto this shoe. After that dries up for an hour or so, I'm going to lace the shoe up with the black laces because that closely resembles the OG pair, the Diamond Dunk. And I'm just going to lift up the tab and place the silver switch that goes onto that velcro. If you really want this diamond dunk to look like the OG pair, you can take some gloss and paint over these black areas because on the OG pair, these are really shiny, but I'm not really a big fan of that gloss look. So I'm just going to keep it like this. In summation, I don't think this project is too difficult on a difficulty scale of one to five. I rate it about a two and a half or a three. Again, the key is patience. Definitely take your time when you're painting on these shoes. You don't want to mess it up. And if this is your first shoe custom, I definitely suggest that you go with the black pair versus the white pair because the white pair, that's just a lot of area you'll have to paint over versus this. You're only painting maybe four different panels. All right, guys, I think this is a good stopping point for this video. What do you think about this transformation from the 2018 Diamond Dunk into the 2005 OG pair of the Diamond Dunks? Is it a good one? Let me know down in the comments below. Go ahead and check out my Instagram, Chris Catalunya with the underscore at the end. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel on the bottom right and hit that notification bell so you know when I upload a new video. And hit me up with a thumbs up if you appreciated this video. All right, guys, I am Chris Catalunya, and we will check you next time. Cheers. Sigina.